This episode of How to Draw is brought to you by the letter G. For God damn it! Alright, well, welcome back. Today we learn how to draw Rango, the Tango Mango. So let's go, go. So, uh, Rangar, if you look at the picture, he's a cat man. Or I guess he could also be a man cat, but either way. He's a person that has both men and cat properties. So, the first thing we're going to focus on, we're going to start with the head. And I also, I know I'm using the old splash art, but that's just because the new one can't fucking see anything. So, I'm just going to use the old one. So, first thing you got to do, start with his head. He's a little kitty cat, so I'm going to start off with the kitty cat mouth. And, um, you know, just... Uh, this part you can't really teach much, you know, you just kind of got to go at it, you just got to free flow, and that's just a basic, simple mouth, and, um, then you just give him a nice bulbous head, and you just give him a nice jaw, and that's basically his head, and now, the next thing I do, he has lots of sharp teeth, because if he doesn't have sharp teeth, he can't eat anything, this man is a carnivore, he has went to Denny's, he's eaten... Uh, everything except his vegetables might not be the healthiest diet but you know that's just what he does this is biology so you give him some sharp teeth on both sets of his mouth because well I just said why so I'm not gonna repeat it you know what they say golden words can't be repeated there we go some sharp teeth now if you look at the picture he has two eyes but unlike other people one of his eyes is real and the other one has this uh, pirate eye patch on it so, let's do that. First, we're going to give his left eye a nice shape. And his right eye is going to be slightly more square with another one inside of it and a little strap to connect it to his head. Because you can't just have an eye patch without a strap. That's just like putting a piece of paper over your eye. It's not going to work. It's not helpful. It's not aesthetically good looking. It's not good at all. So, there we go. This is looking really nice. Uh, just give him a nose. Doesn't really matter what it's shaped like. <sighs> Excuse me. So, uh, there we go. That's what his head looks like. And now... Oh, wait, no, I forgot. Um, if you look at this man, he has a pretty fantastic beard right here. It's, you know, it's really nice. So, if we don't give him a beard, that's just injustice. God's among us. So then, give him a nice, fluffy beard. A nice, nice, fluffy beard. This is one of the best beards I've ever seen in the history of beards. And I have seen some beards, believe me. Now, you have to remember, he's a kitty cat. And kitty cats have these big ears. So we got to give him those as well. Let's give him one over here. Let's give him another over here. This is what he uses to um, hear things. He needs big ears because, um, you know, the rest of his body is already pretty big. So his ears need to compensate for the I don't know where I'm going with this but whatever we need to give him ears so then now if you look back to the picture we basically finished the head so now we gotta start drawing the body but I'm actually gonna skip that part for now I'm gonna start drawing the arms because those parts look cooler now his arms you gotta give him two big shoulders you see two big shoulders you know this is America we have the right to bear arms, or in his case, the right to cat arms. We give him these nice shoulder pads, almost like a football player. And then you just keep drawing one for each hand. And, okay, good job, good job. So now, we have to give him his actual arms. Now his arms, you have to make him quite muscly. Okay, because he's a quite a muscled man. Cat, whatever the hell he is. And... Of course, how is he going to grab his prey without hands? So, let's give him some hands. Some nice, big, strong hands. Actually, just make sure that you don't leave any openings in your thing, because then it's going to color the background a color. I had to learn that the hard way. But here, you can learn it the easy way. Alright, here we go. We got it. We're doing the arms. Let's do the other arm. Oh, I don't have much space on that side. So as an artistic choice, I'm going to make the arm number 02 come a little lower. 
and just sort of make another swooping shape like that. And there, that's the second arm. Now, now that we have that part completed, we can now move on to his body. Now, if you look back at the picture, his body, you can't really see it, but it's there. It's like the wind, really, you know? I read that out of a um, philosophical thing that my grandmother posted on Facebook. So then you draw the body. You have to just make a little curve at the jaw. Come down here. You don't want to draw through his beard, because then it makes him seem like his beard's transparent. I covered this before, but I'm going to do it again. You instead want to just, you want to just leave a gap and the beard's going to cover it, that'll make it look like it's the beard's in front of it, you know? And that's just a technique that us artists like to call the, um, the, the schmim and schmam. It's, um, very popular, very widely used. Um, uh, I invented it. There are several, um, artists that use it these days. Um, Picasso, Da Vinci, um, Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, the other Ninja Turtles. Uh, so, once you've finished that part. As you can see, I started adding in the legs. Because this man, he has four limbs, he has three arms and two legs, so we just gotta give him these two legs. And that's looking pretty decent. So, now, of course, we are very, um, we're just moving along here. It's looking good. Now, if you look back at the picture, we have to look at what we're missing. We put the two arms. We put the head. We put the two legs. But uh, he is a cat, of course, so you had to give him a tail. What kind of cat doesn't have a tail? Okay, that kind of cat doesn't have a tail. But most cats don't have tails. Or most cats have tails. Pardon me. So, let's give him a nice tail. Let's give him a nice tail. A nice tail. It's going to come straight from his butt, because that's where tails comes from. So, there we go. There's the tail. And actually, there's one other thing I missed. If you look at his hair, he's got these um, kind of dreadlocks just going back and forth. So let's just give him some of those. So, oh, damn it. So, um, just, you know, give him dreadlocks. You know, it's, it's like the good old Bob Marley said. No dreadlocks, no cry. No bears, no cry. Yeah, that was a good song. So then... Here we go, we're giving him some hair. Just, you know, like I always say, just free form it. Just, you know, use your emotions to your uh, advantage. Just go ahead and just, um, just, just swish and swash. Just, the, what was that technique called? Smish and smoosh? That one. So just do that. And there we go. Now, he looks kind of naked on his arms. And if you look at the picture, he's not. He has all this armor and these um, protection and these weapons. So let's go ahead and give him that, shall we? So let's just, you know, armor is very interesting. You can just kind of draw this here and just draw a bunch of lines. And in this arm, he has two little pointy things. Two very pointy things. Very pointy. He uses this to um, skewer his kebabs when he makes them for the barbecue that everyone invite him, invited him to, and they thought he was going to bring some normal, good-tasting food, but instead he brought some foreign, exotic stuff that he likes, but no one else likes. So in the end, they just have a bunch of leftovers that no one eats, and just gets really wasted. But, yeah, so that part's done. I'm just I'm just adding some more shading on his arms, on his uh, fingers, because um, that really gives the uh, illusion of depth and uh, it can just make your painting a little bit more um, sophisticated and just keep going like that and then, okay now on his second arm he has a big knife thing um, so we're just gonna just draw that in as well come down here start over here draw this mushroom looking ass thing and then just draw the knife. Simple as that. Just draw the knife. You know, it's the easy tutorial. Step one, head. Step two, arms. Step three, finish the whole thing. The end. So then, now that we've drawn that, we are actually finished, pretty much. We are, you know, we moved along really quickly in this one. 
Um, this is a lot faster than the other ones, but now we can focus on coloring him in. Now, as a true artist, you get to choose what colors you want to use to color him in. Now, if you look at the picture, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Zoom back in. If you look back at the picture, he is very white. He has lots of white fur, lots of white hair. He's very white, but his armor is brown. So we pick a nice shade of brown. I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to just pick this thing, and just go ahead and start coloring in. Just whammo, kablammo, kablammo, flammo, and then just go ahead. That was not what was I intended. Neither was that. This is what I mentioned earlier. You know, you want to close off the gaps so that the paint doesn't leak out into the other areas of the painting. Simple as that. So simple. It's simpler than the most simplest thing you can think of. What's the most simplest thing you can think of? For me, it's probably got to be um, egg. Egg, that's what it is. But yeah, forget about that. Now we've colored in the basic parts that are brown. Let's move on to the... Well, what do you want to move on to, actually? You know, let's ask the audience. What do you guys want to move on to? Okay, yeah, that's what I thought, too. Just like Dora the Explorer. I thought we should move on to the claws. Let's pick a kind of grayish color. And just go ahead and color it in. You see, people think drawing... God damn. God People think drawing is complicated, but the reality is... God, fuck it. The reality is that it's actually quite simple if you just put your heart and soul into it. Really, it truly, truly is. You know, if you just believed in yourself a little bit more, then you'd find that this stuff is really easy. Now, excuse me while I use this paint bucket. I really need to get in the zone. The auto zone. Now I'm going to use white. I'm going to go ahead and color in his face. Well, his face is already white, so I actually don't need to do that. But I am going to color in his eye. His eye is yellow, but his other eye is blue, because that gives him some diversity. We here at this channel, we accept all kinds of colored eyes. We do not discriminate against eye types. We are an, an equal eye. You know what they say? Eye for an eye makes the whole world go deaf. We are equal opportunity over here. And, believe it or not, well, I guess or not, because we're not finished, because we're to color in the mouth black, but now, believe it or not, except in this case, you have to believe it, we are completely finished. You know, let's give him a nice name at the bottom. Rango the Tango Mango. And there you go. That's him. That's what he looks like. It's perfect. It's beautiful. So, um, yeah, I just think it looks really nice. And uh, you don't even have to tell me you think it looks nice. I already know you think it looks nice. Just follow my advice and keep following it and just keep trying to become a good artist. And, well, you know what I say. Just keep drawing and stuff. See you later.